Hi, Jill Brotherton Art here again with a new video after something of a break. This is a 20 minute or so video, just slightly less, a portrait of a woman and it's an oil sketch um, and it's pretty quick and easy, so let's get into it. So I'm using my usual um, A4 size um, textured oil painting paper. Um, the reason I use it is it's pretty cheap um, and so it's ideal for these kind of quick sketches because on occasion I do mess them up and end up throwing them in the bin, <laughs> which when it's just a piece of paper is not really that big a deal. So I blocked in the background with a bit of burnt sienna mixed with uh, sap green and I used some um, linseed oil, refined linseed oil obviously to loosen it up a bit um, and then uh, I'm now just using some black with a thin brush to uh, map out roughly where the figure is going to go and the reason I say roughly is because um, I will sort of sculpt and carve into this um, uh, figure as I go along she is certainly not right just from the get-go like this it's something I will work on Okay, so starting blocking in all the main shapes, um, the face, the hair, and the um, obviously the clothes. The face is really just a mixture of burnt sienna with alizarin crimson and some titanium white. And of course, depending on how dark or light you go, um, you will need to obviously um, vary the um, quantities. Of that mixture so obviously a darker skin you would probably want more burnt uh, sienna and um, the lighter skin uh, possibly with more of the pinks in uh, you could use uh, more um, alizarin crimson and titanium white and you can also darken it with um, black and um, if you have um, say a darker ethnic skin um, then obviously you could use the blues and purples sometimes really um, add a lot of striking contrast to the skin tones. Um, so obviously this, this lady is white, so um, it's a fairly straightforward mix of, um, of the burnt sienna, uh, alizarin crimson and titanium white. And to further warm it, warm, warm it up, I would add sometimes uh, some... Um, cabin yellow and to cool it down again the blues and the purples as I mentioned before on the sort of shadow side of the face sometimes and around the eyes um, you get a lot of those um, bluey tones and where the skin is thin also um, around the eyes um, anyhow so um, now I'm just kind of refining the shapes I can see as you start to block in you can start to see um, what's wrong and I knew from early on that the head that I'd drawn was um, the hair was too big um, out of proportion and of course with oil paints it's absolutely zero bother to carve that back down um, or to make it bigger um, you know as you go along the only thing I would caution against of course is, is doing detail at this stage because it would soul destroying to kind of put in all the details of eyes and noses and lips and things like that and then find out your face is completely out of proportion and you haven't sculpted uh, it properly with the various shades and tones and values and then you have to start the whole thing again that's annoying um, so I would definitely try and get all that first done first and as you can see I'm sort of just gently highlighting where the lips and the nose are going to go and the jawline um, and this is before I even think about adding eyeballs or eyebrows or anything like that. And you just have to feel your way through a painting, really. I mean, there's lots of rules and regulations people try to say. And um, I think there's just absolutely no substitute for just having a crack at it and working out your own little, um, you know, system. Because... When I try to, I'm not saying other artists don't have a lot to offer, otherwise if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this video. Um, but I think there are some techniques that are absolutely really helpful, such as learning about warmth and cool 
uh, shades and value ranges. I think value ranging was really important to me because when I first used to paint, I used to paint quite flat because I really didn't understand the importance of the value range, the darks and the lights. And sometimes I didn't even know how to achieve it. Even when I could see I needed it, I didn't understand how to achieve it. Um, so I learned that from other artists. But you can also pick up some really bad advice from other artists, such as artists who say, always use big brushes. You know, you don't need to use a small brush and get bogged down in the big detail. Well, I use a small brush and I still don't get bogged down in the detail. Um, but I, when I try and use it, when I took that advice, literally, I painted some really duff paintings for about six months and became quite demoralised until I realised that it was, you know, I, I was doing something that suited someone else's artistic style, but absolutely not mine. And because I paint ink and watercolour paintings, and I start those off with a small pen, black pen, watercolour ink, and I will sketch in the detail. And then I will wash over it with the watercolours. And, you know, I really enjoy doing these paintings and they always come out pretty good. Um, so I was thinking, why, why, why am I oil painting? Because truly, oil painting is easier than watercolour to some, to some degree. Um, so why were my oil paintings worse than my watercolours? And I realised it was just because I was using, I was sticking, I sort of, it got in my head, this whole brush thing, and I couldn't get it back out. And I thought, I really like the loose look of paintings and I was I was attributing that to the size of the brush rather than the technique and the confidence that comes with just um, painting more and more and getting experience. It's nothing really to do with the brush size. And my whole point of telling you that little uh, tale, uh, well, just backtrack a little bit. So what happened was then I got back into the smaller brush, sketching things out as I would if I was doing a watercolour. And then, um, and then I felt comfortable then to go in and finish the painting. I don't do that, that with florals. I must say I am even looser with florals and I, I don't tend to draw them in. But portraits, definitely I do. And anything that requires a, 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 a real structure, such as a building or a, um, landscapes, I wouldn't do it. Uh, unless there was a building, like if there was a cottage or something in the landscape, then I would draw it in first um, and actually that helps loosen me up then because I'm not focused on staying tight to get the shape right because I've already done that so now I can just concentrate on having a really nice artistic range of colours and values and you know tones so I hope that that makes sense I, I kind of waffling on a bit there but the reason for that is that once I started going back to my old fashioned way of painting, but with my new knowledge, um, you know, which I've gained from just painting and painting every day for years, then I, I got, I went back to being um, better again. Um, so just beware, there's lots of artists out there. They have a particular style that may not suit the way you like to paint. Um, so I would caution against taking too literally what other artists say on here. Um, here I am now, obviously, I'm blocking in the eyes and the lips and I'm, you know, not drawing lines. I'm dropping in, um, you know, lumps of colour, really, even on the lips, certainly the eyes. Um, you don't have a... Um, you know, a black line that's solid and black all the way representing eyelashes. Um, it could be black, a blob here and a bit of blue and then fading to grey or... Um, it's all about sculpting. I think oil painting is just sculpting with paint. Um, you know, it's not drawing. Um, so, um, you can fiddle with this as much as you want but of course I'm doing a loose oil sketch so I didn't really want to get heavy with detail. So when it comes to the value range what's really important you can see right there actually on this painting her nose she was very white and her nose and around her eyes were very picking up a very strong light and on her chin and obviously over the top of her lips 
and as you, you can see how that really contrasts with you've got to get the darkness in the in the side of the eye in the eye socket to contrast with that light highlight on the nose and and also you can see the depth in the shadow in her collar uh, the black there so you've got the valley range all the way from black right up to you know almost pure titanium white highlights on her face where the light is hitting um, and that's what I mean about the valley range if you haven't got that valley range so striking and so differentiated then the whole painting becomes a bit bland um, and you if you get those details those sort of ranges right then you can get away with missing out quite a lot of other details it's all about tricking the eye into what you're seeing so you'll notice I didn't draw in lips and I didn't draw in a nose or eyes I I've been dropping in lumps of color here and there and then refining them with another drop of color and or um, sculpting them by going around the um, rim of her lips say for instance with a highlight of white and under her eyes um, I really enjoyed painting this painting actually although I did fiddle a little bit because I do fiddle more when I'm actually filming it and I must make a note of um, apologize for the the quality I, I'm not exactly sure whether I didn't have enough light on but it's it's quite or maybe I should have zoomed in with the iPad closer but um, I don't know why it came out uh, a little bit fuzzy this I, I do apologize for that but I hope you can see enough to get a general idea so the other important thing especially uh, when wanting to highlight the valley ranges in a painting to make it sort of really pop um, is uh, to restate areas especially on a surface like this which kind of really absorbs the oil and it can uh, dull the colors as it starts to dry uh, so what you need to do is once you've got everything in place and you're pretty happy with it then a really good um, tip is to restate your colors especially your darks and your lights and you're building up color then and so you get a much more vibrant energetic painting than if you just did one um, flat kind of um, attempt and then you just left it so um, I I learned that from actually I did learn that from a video I watched on YouTube it was um, a portrait of it was somebody doing a John Singer Sargent portrait. I can't remember it, but if I remember it, I'll put the link below. And it was um, the restating of the colours. And I thought, ah, oh, that's where I go wrong. You know, because when you first apply a colour, because it's fresh and glossy and wet, it seems really vibrant. You can't really tell until it starts to dry um, how vibrant it's going to remain. But when you build on top, um, uh, it's quite hard on a canvas to do this because the canvas stays wet a lot longer. But it's really good on these um, these papers that I use because um, they it does absorb a lot of the oil very quickly. So it's almost like doing um, several layers of a painting like we used to do in the old days when you don't when you're not doing it a la prima. So you would leave a layer to dry and then paint over the next layer. Um, with these you can paint over and over even in one sitting and so you can build up some really nice vibrancy in your painting you can actually even varnish these papers because the oil makes them sort of thick and bendy um, so they become quite quite solid once you've finished painting and they've dried um, although I don't I don't tend to varnish these oil sketches but you could. So I'm, I'm nearing the end now, as you can see. I mean, I'm I'm really um, really just refining, but without refining with details. I'm just refining highlights, shades, colours, like just putting an extra pop of blue in her eye. And as you can see, I refined the hair. I brought that down a bit. It was um, it was the wrong shape. Um, so I went over that and zhushed her hair up a bit because she looked a bit funny before. 
Um, oh, I love oil painting. There's such a freedom that comes with it. But I also really quite like, I love doing the watercolours, which is a completely different technique. Um, but both do require a certain looseness and a certain confidence. Um, I think any painting, when you get up too tight, just suffers, really. Um, I do I do like loose loose portraits, loose paintings. As you know, I've been selling these on eBay. Oh, I'm not sure how long I will continue to do that, but I will leave a link below. This one is going to be for sale on there. So have a look and have a mosey through my eBay account. I'm probably going to start selling on Amazon soon. I did try Etsy. I don't recommend Etsy. Um, if you want me to talk about um, selling on Etsy, Amazon, eBay in any of my videos, then let me know in the comments below. But I'm assuming you're just here for the art, so I won't bother. Also, if you would prefer some music videos, you know, just where there's music in the background rather than talking, also let me know about that. And if there's anything else you want to know um, or any improvements you'd like to see me make to my channel, let me know in the comments below. And I think this is nearing the end now, so just remember to subscribe and like, click the notification bell and share with any of your arty friends or aspiring artists. And I'll see you again in the next video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.